After just one night, the ground at Yellowstone opened up. There was no explosion and no rising lava. Instead, a pool of hot water appeared on land that had long been considered stable. The hole stretched more than 13 feet across and dropped nearly four meters deep. The water inside was cloudy and hot, with steady bursts of heat rising from below, as if something beneath the surface had quietly come to life. In volcanic systems, it is these subtle changes that concern scientists the most. They can signal shifting pressure and energy looking for a new path out. Yellowstone is one of the most closely monitored geological regions in the United States, yet this event came with no clear warning. If the ground has begun to open in this way, the question is no longer about the size of the hole. It is about what could happen next beneath Yellowstone. Let's find out. One, when a national icon is forced to stop and reassess. No one saw the moment the hole formed. By the time it was discovered, the event had already passed. A broad depression had opened in the Yellowstone landscape, in a place long regarded as stable. Steam and heat rose continuously, showing that this was not a remnant of the past, but a change actively unfolding. In a short amount of time, the image spread far beyond the park not because it was overly dramatic, but because it appeared in a place many Americans believed should never change in such a way. Yellowstone is more than a national park. For generations, it has symbolized the idea that some places in America exist beyond the span of a human lifetime, a landscape preserved, protected, and passed down almost unchanged from one generation to the next. For older viewers, it is not only a travel destination, it is a piece of shared memory and a reminder that the country has managed to hold on to something wild, vast, and enduring over time. That is why the initial response to the whole was not panic. It was disbelief. As areas were fenced off, as familiar roads were rerouted, and as certain entrances closed not because of weather or wildfire, but because the ground beneath was no longer considered stable, people began to realize that this was no longer an isolated incident a national symbol was being forced to adapt to the very land it sits on. For those who have driven hundreds of miles to reach Yellowstone or planned a once-in-a-lifetime visit, this moment carried a different feeling. It was not the fear of a sudden disaster, but a deeper unease. If even Yellowstone can change in ways that cannot be reversed, then what in the American landscape is truly permanent? A national park can close for a time, but what unsettles many is the possibility that it may never return to the image they once knew. Here, the whole is no longer the center of the story. It has become a symbol, not a symbol of destruction, but of fragility. A reminder that even places we consider eternal are shaped by forces beyond our control. Yellowstone is still there, but the way people look at it has begun to shift. It is no longer only a place to admire, it is a place that must be watched and evaluated, and perhaps accepted for the possibility that it may not remain exactly as it appears in the memories of past generations. And this is the deeper fear. Not that Yellowstone will vanish in a single catastrophic event, but that it may change slowly, piece by piece, in ways that force us to redraw the line between what can be preserved forever and what can only exist within a chapter of history. When a small change in the ground is enough to shake that sense of security, the question is not only for scientists, it is for everyone who has ever believed that some places in America would always stand still through time. To understand why a national symbol like Yellowstone could enter such a fragile moment, we must look beneath the entire region. What is changing did not begin with a single hole. It began with a much larger system that has moved in silence for thousands of years and is now coming into direct conflict with the way people preserve and use this land. Two, beneath Yellowstone lies a system that never truly rests. The important thing to understand is that Yellowstone has never been a still block of land. What we see on the surface, the geysers, the hot springs, the unusually colored pools, are only the visible edges of a massive system that is constantly at work below. This is not a landscape that was built once and left alone. It is a process that continues day after day, whether anyone is watching or not. 
Beneath Yellowstone is a complex hydrothermal network where water, heat, and pressure are always searching for a path to move through. Water sinks deep into hot rock, heats up, builds pressure, and rises again through the weakest points it can find. These outlets are not permanent. They can weaken, clog, or open in new places as the conditions below shift. That is why Yellowstone's history includes geysers that disappeared, pools that changed color, and quiet areas that suddenly became more active over time. What surprises many people is the scale of this system. Yellowstone does not behave like a machine with a clear on and off switch. It acts more like a living organism whose parts are connected across long distances. A change in one area can influence another miles away. When water or heat is blocked at one point, the pressure does not vanish. It simply looks for another way out. And during that search, new features can appear at the surface. This is why scientists often stress that Yellowstone cannot be understood through any single event. A hole in the ground, a small collapse, or a hydrothermal explosion is not the root cause. It is the local expression of broader shifts happening across a much larger system. To us, these events may seem unusual. To the land below, they are part of an ongoing adjustment. The challenge is that this process does not pay attention to boundaries drawn by people. It does not distinguish between protected zones, roads, or tourist areas. When pressure builds long enough and strong enough, it will find the weakest point available no matter where that point happens to be. Most of the time, these changes unfold slowly and quietly, noticeable to science but not yet obvious to the public, until the surface shifts in a way no one can ignore. And this is where the story becomes uncomfortable for many. Yellowstone has been preserved as a symbol of permanence, yet the land itself follows a completely different logic. It shifts, rearranges, and rebuilds on cycles far longer than a human lifetime. When those cycles collide with infrastructure, tourism, and the expectation that everything will remain stable, conflict becomes unavoidable. If Yellowstone is truly a system that is always trying to rebalance itself, then the next question is no longer why a hole appeared. The more troubling question is what might happen when that system is forced to release pressure in places where people live, build, and trust that the ground will not change in ways beyond their control. 3. When natural pressure begins to collide with human space. For most of the time, Yellowstone operates on a rhythm people rarely notice. Hot water moves underground. Pressure builds and releases through familiar geysers. The changes are slow. Enough for science to measure, but not enough to force everyday life above to adjust. Yet history shows that this pattern does not always hold. When pressure can no longer escape through its usual pathways, the system looks for a new weakness. And that weakness is not always in distant or isolated areas. In the past, Yellowstone has recorded sudden hydrothermal explosions that left deep craters and sent debris hundreds of meters away. There was no rising lava. There was no clear early warning. There was only an instant release of pressure and a landscape altered permanently. Events like these are rare but they are not unheard of. What makes them concerning is not how often they happen, but where. When an explosion occurs far from any developed area, it becomes a scientific note, but when similar processes begin to appear near boardwalks, near parking areas, or near major routes, they immediately become a public safety issue. The line between natural behavior and real-world risk becomes very thin. The difficulty is that these processes do not follow a predictable script. They are not like major earthquakes or wildfires, which often come with recognizable warnings and established response plans. They unfold quickly, locally, and are often understood only after they have left their mark. For those managing the park, this creates a hard question. How do you protect people from dangers that are infrequent, subtle, and yet powerful enough to cause major disruption? This is where the clash between two different logics becomes clear. On one side is nature's logic, where pressure, must be released one way or another. On the other side is human logic, where infrastructure, tourism, and daily routines are built on the assumption that major changes will come slowly, predictably, and with time to respond. When these logics no longer align, the situation does not need to be catastrophic to become serious. For many Americans, 
especially those who have long seen Yellowstone as a safe and familiar destination. This shift is difficult to accept. Not because they believe the park is about to disappear, but because they recognize that certain risks are no longer fully outside their daily experience. A road may need to close. A familiar area may become restricted. And these changes may not come from management errors, but from the land itself acting in its own way. Looking back at the hole that appeared almost overnight, the story now carries a different meaning. It is no longer a single incident. It is a reminder that the system beneath Yellowstone can produce events small enough to avoid panic, yet large enough to force people to rethink how they use and trust this land. And it is these just large enough events that are the hardest to predict. When underground changes begin to reach roads, walkways, and the infrastructure people rely on, the discussion moves beyond geology. It becomes a practical question. Who will bear the cost when a natural system that never stops moving collides with a human system built on the belief that the ground will stay still? 4. The Hidden Cost of Instability Roads, closures, and quiet disruptions. Changes beneath the ground do not affect people directly at first. They affect infrastructure. Roads, bridges, walkways, and the structures we rely on are all built on the assumption that the ground below will remain stable long enough to support them. When that assumption begins to weaken, infrastructure reacts first, and people are the ones who must adjust their familiar routines. At Yellowstone, this has become clear. When signs suggest that the ground is no longer as dependable as before, management decisions shift quickly from open access to restriction. Certain roads must close for inspection. Familiar walkways are fenced off, not because they have collapsed, but because the risk is real. To the public, these changes may look like overreactions, but for those responsible, they are the only way to prevent consequences that cannot be reversed. The issue is that infrastructure serves far more than tourism. It supports an entire economic ecosystem surrounding the park. When a road closes, the flow of visitors slows. When an entrance is restricted, gateway towns feel the impact almost immediately. Inns, gas stations, small stores and service businesses enter a period of waiting marked by uncertainty. There is no moment of obvious collapse, only the quiet sense that everything is slowing down and no one knows when normal will return. For older travelers who plan their trips long in advance, these disruptions carry a different weight. It is not simply a matter of choosing another route. It is the possibility that a long-awaited journey may not unfold as expected or may need to be postponed indefinitely. When a national park must close parts of itself because the ground is no longer considered stable, the belief that these places will always welcome visitors begins to be tested. At the management level, every closure or restriction carries a cost. There is the cost of inspection, reinforcement, and monitoring, the cost of maintaining infrastructure that cannot be fully used, and more importantly, the cost of choosing between safety and accessibility. These decisions are not made in a moment of crisis, but during a prolonged period of tension where no one wants to act too slowly, yet no one wants to admit that some changes may be long-lasting. This is where the idea of an aftermath takes on real form. Not scenes of destruction, but a sequence of quiet adjustments, limited access, scattered traffic, strained local economies. And all of it unfolds while the land beneath continues moving at its own pace, indifferent to travel schedules or peak seasons. The concern is not that Yellowstone is collapsing. It is that people may need to adjust to a new reality, a national park that is no longer fully predictable a place where accessibility may shift according to processes deep underground that people cannot control. And as infrastructure adapts, the question becomes less about danger and more about how much stability we are willing to lose in order to continue using this land. Once infrastructure begins to absorb the consequences, the impact does not stop with visitors or park managers. It reaches the communities around Yellowstone, the people whose daily lives depend on the park's stability. And it is there that the real cost of these quiet changes becomes visible. 5. The People Paying the Price Far from the headlines. When Yellowstone is forced to adjust how it operates, 
the first people affected are not scientists or administrators. They are the communities that depend on the park's stability. These are the gateway towns whose way of life is tied to the flow of visitors each season. For them, any disruption is not simply news. It is a question of livelihood. When roads close or access is restricted, visitors do not disappear entirely, but they become harder to predict. A busy day may be followed by several quiet ones. Inns, restaurants, and small shops must operate in a holding pattern, never sure whether the coming week will bring crowds or emptiness. For family businesses that have survived through generations, this prolonged uncertainty creates pressure that is difficult to see, but impossible to ignore. Seasonal workers feel the effects as well. Many come to Yellowstone on short-term contracts, relying on clear peak seasons to plan their employment. When the park adjusts its hours or limits access, their schedules shift, shifts are reduced, income becomes unstable. And for those with few alternatives, this means taking on financial risk for an unknown period of time. For longtime residents, the impact is also emotional. Yellowstone is not just a workplace or a source of income. It is the heart of their community's identity. When part of the park must close because the ground is no longer considered stable, pride mixes with worry. Not because they fear the park is disappearing, but because they realize that the stability once taken for granted may no longer be guaranteed. Older visitors sense this change as well. Many have planned their trips for years, seeing Yellowstone as a landmark of a lifetime. When they must reroute or postpone because of conditions beyond anyone's control, disappointment comes with a difficult question. Will that opportunity still exist in the near future? For those who may not have many chances left to travel, this uncertainty carries far more weight than a simple inconvenience. What stands out is that none of these consequences require a dramatic disaster. There are no mass evacuations, no scenes of destruction on television, only a series of small, prolonged adjustments that reshape how people live, work, and plan around Yellowstone. And it is that quiet nature that makes the cost harder to see, yet harder to avoid. 6. What it means to preserve a place that refuses to stand still. Yellowstone still exists and will likely continue to exist for a long time. But after what has happened, what has changed is not the park itself, but the way people understand it. It is no longer simply a landscape to admire. It is a system in constant motion, one that requires people to adapt if they want to be present there safely. For decades, preservation has been understood as keeping everything stable over time. Maintaining the scenery, keeping the trails familiar, preserving the sense of reassurance that national parks offer. At Yellowstone, that idea worked well for many years, but recent changes show that the land does not follow human expectations. It moves to the rhythm of water, heat, and pressure below, forces that cannot be fixed or shaped to our liking. When these natural processes overlap with infrastructure and daily life, preservation is no longer about keeping things the same. It becomes a set of choices. Choices between access and safety, between opening widely and accepting long-term limits. These decisions are not dramatic, but they shape how future generations will experience Yellowstone. For many older Americans, Yellowstone is tied to memory and national pride. It represents the belief that some places are preserved beyond time and social change, when they realize that even such a symbol must adapt to the natural forces below. The sense of loss is not about the land itself. It is about a shift in the meaning of permanence. The hole that appeared almost overnight will eventually blend into Yellowstone's long history, just as many changes before it have. But it has served a purpose. It has forced people to reconsider the relationship between preservation and control. Yellowstone is not an outdoor museum where everything stands still. It is a living landscape, and preserving it in this century means accepting that perfect stability has never been its true nature. At this point, the question is no longer whether Yellowstone is safe to exist. It is whether people are willing to adjust their expectations, what to maintain, what to let go, and whether a national symbol loses value when it changes or becomes even more meaningful when it reminds us that living with nature requires accepting its limits.